While Republicans insist we need to have the conversation about Social Security reform in the future, sometime in the future, not now, not now, Democrats are already having a conversation about Social Security, but not to reform it, but to use it as a weapon against Republicans. Per CNN and other media outlets, when Florida Governor Ron DeSantis ran his first campaign for Congress in 2012, he expressed support, supporting privatizing Social Security. Of course, privatizing is in quote, because we don't know that he actually said privatize. Most people are saying personalize it. Most people are saying maybe you should own your retirement. CNN predicts, with little surprise, that this should provide red meat for attacks from former President Donald Trump and from Democrats should DeSantis announce a presidential run. If indeed this is the case, it adds credence to Nikki Haley's slogan for her new campaign that we need a new generation of leaders. We need young people that are willing to talk about Social Security reform. The president who brought us Social Security, Franklin D. Roosevelt, told the nation in his first inauguration in 1933, in the dark days of the Depression, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. <laughs> the Bible says fear God, but he said you only have to fear fear. Okay, Roosevelt gets high marks for courage and leadership by making that statement that's false to the Bible. The problem was not that he was bold. The problem is what he did. So today, again, the nation badly needs bold leadership. And what needs to be done is undo the damage that Roosevelt did back then. Most of the profound fiscal and social problems that we face today trace back to Roosevelt's actions and decisions in 1930, most specifically his signing Social Security into law in 1935. The constitutionality of Social Security was challenged in 1937 in Helvering v. Davis. The argument was that Social Security violates the Constitution, the Tenth Amendment in the Constitution, which prohibits action by the federal government not specifically enumerated in the Constitution. You can't get involved where you don't belong, federal government. Ah! But the Supreme Court found Social Security constitutional by offering a new, sweeping understanding of the Constitution's general clause in Article 1, Section 8. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes to provide for the common defense and general welfare, unquote. General welfare. We're still talking about it today. People don't like that I call Social Security welfare, but <laughs> what is it if it's found in general welfare clause other than welfare? General welfare had always been understood to be about implementation of explicit authorities enumerated in the Constitution. But now, general welfare could be just about anything that Congress wants to do. And any and any and anything is what they're doing. Helverin v. Davis and Social Security opened the door for today's modern welfare state, period. Social Security was the nation's first transfer payment program in which one set of taxpayers could be taxed and that revenue used to transfer to others for purposes that Congress deem in the general welfare. And per economist blogger Scott Granitz, Transfer payments now tally up to about $4 trillion annually, almost two-thirds of the federal budget. They now constitute over 20% of America's disposable income compared to 5% in the 1950s. In case some still think Social Security is an investment retirement program, please think again. I don't know how much information you need to please think about it again. I know you've been duped into getting money into it for all of these years, and now, by golly, it's my entitlement. I deserve it. But think about it. This is a welfare state transfer program in which taxes taken from the working now are used to make payments to those currently retired. And the pyramid's now upside down. <laughs> Shortly after Social Security became law, there were more than 40 working and paying tax uh, there were more than 40 working and paying taxes for every retiree, okay? So you had 40 people paying taxes, and they were working, and the retiree was collecting benefits from their work. Today, because of increasing lifespans and decreasing birth rates, 
There are three. Yep, three taxpayers working are paying for Social Security. So there are three people paying for the one retiree. That's a long way from 40. The Congressional Budget Office says that Social Security revenues will fall short by 23% of obligations by 2034. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, we've heard these skies falling for a long time, ideas for a long time just to reform the system, to personalize the system. But it is serious business, because as it is only a tax, as the Supreme Court has ruled twice it's only a tax, you're right. They just keep go going with the taxes. Of course, they're going to continue to pay the seniors, and they should. The seniors put into the, to the system, all of those that are close to retirement age, yes, they've been duped into paying over the last 40, 50 years. Of course, we should pay those obligations. But should we be in this deal in the first place with the federal government? The welfare state idea does not even have an American pedigree. It has its roots in 19th century European socialism. Our fiscal problems today are not about accounting, but about principles. We need to restore American principles of ownership and freedom. And this would be a great boon particularly to low-income Americans, that social welfare programs are supposedly helping, to personal life Social Security will really help them. Per the Committee to Unleash Prosperity, if a single person earning 45% of national medium income could invest just 10% of their income in a diversified stock bond portfolio over 40 years working life, rather than paying that money into Social Security taxes, they could purchase an annuity at retirement worth $37,734 compared to the $11,923 that they would get from Social Security. With all the cries about the wealth gap in the country, per the Federal Reserve, only 34% of black households and 24% of Hispanic households own stock, compared to 61% of white households. This is not good. You want to close the wealth gap, then let people own Wall Street. Let people out of this so-called deal with the federal government. By restoring America's principles of ownership and freedom, we can fix our fiscal problems. And we can make every American household healthier and wealthier.